Okay, imagine that we're out for a walk on Great George Street in Charlottetown on a day like this. And we see this building. It's a pretty solid building, vaguely Italianate architecture. It was a bank, the Bank of Prince Edward Island. And it has that solidity that the architecture of a bank tries to project, something to inspire trust. Well, this bank, was deceiving. It was the first bank ever established on Prince Edward Island and in the mid 1800s there was a need as the economy on the island started to develop, the shipbuilding industry started to evolve rapidly. There was a need for currency, a need for capital, a need for the facilitation of financing and so in 1856 the island established its first ever bank the bank of prince edward island soon there were four other banks and we had five of local banks well the prince edward island bank was the oldest most respectable of those banks now in the late 1870s the island fell prey to the recession sweeping the world at that time. The directors of the bank, who had oversight over the policies, advised the cashier, someone we would call today a manager, to make credit tighter. Well, in November 1881, the cashier of the bank went on a business trip to St. John, New Brunswick. And he didn't stop traveling until he got to Baltimore, Maryland. On the way, he wrote a letter to his wife where he confessed that behind the backs of the directors of the bank, he had been making secret loans. In some cases to people the bank had refused to loan money to, and in other cases where they had set a ceiling on the amount of the loans. Mr. Brecken, that was his name, J.R. Brecken, had begun advancing the money. Now, I'd like to say that he was getting a kickback or bribes, but this is a quintessential PEI story. Apparently, he was just trying to be a nice guy. Anyway, by the time that he left, the bank was in debt through bad loans, anywhere depending on the report from about $450,000 to $700,000. The directors of the bank who were supposed to be you know, providing oversight, who weren't looking very hard, made every effort to keep the bank afloat. But by the following spring, the bank had gone bankrupt. The collapse of the most respected bank sent shockwaves through the community on Prince Edward Island. The economy was already in a fragile state. By 1906, there were no more local banks on Prince Edward Island. And in one sense, that was the protection for depositors because being part of large national chains of banks provided more security for your deposits. On the other hand, Local banks have a vested interest in the local economy. But the purpose of a bank is to earn money for its investors, for the shareholders. And as local banks went under on Prince Edward Island and throughout the region, more money went into the bank accounts in deposits than came back out again in investments and loans because a bank invests its money where it can earn the highest return and in this instance you know the higher returns could be made elsewhere it's not the bank's fault the bank was doing what banks are supposed to do but one could argue that it had a harmful effect on the local economy on prince edward island which was desperately in need of investment and capital we can't trace that all back 
to that day in November 1881. But it does provide a story for a building and a background to the decline of the island economy in the late 1800s. So now you know.